Our Old Testament reading this evening is from Isaiah 55. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle this evening is from 1 Peter. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison. Because they formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which is corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Gospel is from Matthew 28. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this midweek in Lent is primarily Matthew 28, but also selected text as we go through the four parts of the Catechism. And I didn't say it was going to be easy, did I? Taking on something for Lent, taking on the catechisms? Is the devil trying to deter you? Well, I hope not, but he is, I'm sure. The title of my sermon is The Washing of Regeneration, Holy Baptism. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, sanctify us in the truth, for your word is truth. Have you had to call your plumber lately? Anyone? No one, okay. Plumbers are a blessing, or are you a do-it-yourselfer? Don't need no plumber, I'll do it myself, take care of the problem. But we certainly do at times, and we will at times, need plumbers to fix. Water leaks and drippy faucets and toilets that aren't working properly, sewage pipes, to root out the clogged drainage systems so that the water can flow where it's supposed to go. Plumbers certainly do a very important work to benefit us in having access to good, clean water so that our toilets are working properly and we can flush away that waste and overall so that we can live and maintain a good life. Well, for many of you in normal, recently, life was made quite difficult when there was a boil order. And you couldn't use any water without boiling it first. Was that hard? Was that difficult? How many of you had to go through that? I'm in Bloomington, I'm sorry. <laughs> Having a boil order makes you realize though, how important water is in your life. How you value clean water. You may have taken it for granted in the past when you flip on that faucet and grab a glass and, and fill up that glass with water and drink it down. But now there is more effort involved, right? Or when you have to flush the toilet, you don't often think about it. You can't flush it for other purposes. Or maybe that you can't even take a shower. Boy, that is rough. When you can't, this makes life very difficult, and so you want to call a plumber. You want to call someone who is going to come and help you and help to 
alleviate the problem, certainly as soon as possible. Well, in a sense, our Lord is acting also like a plumber in fixing our plumbing as human beings. He fixes the sin problem that has made our pipes backed up with with junk. It's polluted our body as a whole. It's like a water main break in our body, and how is it going to get cleaned up so that our body will work? as God intended in the beginning, to have life, to have it to the fullest. So tonight we explore those four teachings on the catechism, the foundation, the content and the promises, thirdly, the efficacy that is the power, and fourth, the significance of baptism for our Christian life. So first, the foundation in Matthew 28, verse 19, is our focus text. Sin certainly makes us realize how important water is for our life. That is, when it is combined with God's word, baptism is for our life. The washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit, being born from above in baptism, as we were reminded of in our gospel lesson a couple Sundays ago, the meeting with Jesus and Nicodemus. Jesus' famous words also in the Great Commission for the apostles and for all congregations thereafter and for pastors to baptize all nations. That encourages us that the foundation of baptism is founded not on our own works, not on our own words, our own efforts to obey God, to fix the plumbing in our body and soul, but on the Word, on the Word that accomplishes what it is sent to do by God himself, as our Old Testament lesson says. He uses baptism to fix the problem of that contamination of our soul and gives us clean water with his Word to give us life, and to sustain our life in him. Second, we look at the content, the promises of God's word from Mark chapter 16, verse 16. The content of God's word for baptism reveals wonderful promises for those who are baptized into Christ, whose plumbing has been fixed as the living water flows now in me and in you. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. Baptism saves. Saves by God's grace, planting that seed of faith through the power of the word that doesn't return void, but accomplishes what it is sent to do. It succeeds always for what it is sent to do. Water in baptism saves as it is connected with the word delivering to us what Christ won through his death and through his resurrection. Yes, baptism saves each and every one of you. That is not a contradictory statement from Scripture. It is true, for 1 Peter 3.21 says it. Baptism saves you. It now saves you. It brings salvation to you through water and the word and a clean conscience. Thirdly, the efficacy, the power, from Titus chapter 3, verses 5 through 8. Baptism has the power to be effective, efficacious, because it's a washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit. It is God's work and power to regenerate you, to renew you, to make you a new creation, so that you will walk then all the days of your life in that newness of life as the new man, the new person, in your baptism daily. And so lastly, then we focus on the significance of our baptism. As we live out the Christian life, of dying and rising in our baptism daily. 
Romans 6, verse 4. So as you've been cleansed, as your plumbing has been fixed, living the Christian life now is not dependent on your own strength or your own willpower, but on Christ and the Holy Spirit at work in you and through you. A return to your baptism daily. A dying to your sin daily through repentance, a killing that old Adam, killing the sinner in us through Christ's death delivered to us in our baptism. And a rising in newness of life daily as we are raised, raised with him in the joy of Easter every day. This is that circular life, the nature of baptismal life, and the present tense of our baptismal life. Luther says in his large catechism, so a truly Christian life is nothing other than a daily baptism, once begun and ever to be continued. For this must be done without ceasing, that we always keep purging that daily flush of the pipes, right? Those are my words. Purging away whatever belongs to the old Adam. Then what belongs to the new man, the new man who has come forth, may come forth, but what is the old man? What is that old Adam? It is what is born in human beings from Adam. Anger. Hate. Envy. Unchastity. Stinginess. Laziness. Arrogance. Yes, unbelief. The old man is infected with all vices and has by nature nothing good in him. Romans 7, 18. Now, when we have come into Christ's kingdom, John 3, 5, these things must daily decrease. The longer we live, the more we become gentle, patient, meek, and ever turn away from unbelief, greed, hatred, envy, and arrogance. So far Luther's quote on that. While we as Lutherans seem certainly to struggle, to struggle to focus on our baptism let alone remember it daily. I have had many conversations <laughs> with Lutherans that it's so funny how we don't. So many of us forget about our baptism, don't remember it. But we must. There are the promises for us there in our baptism from Christ's words and his institution comfort and the blessing of his comforting forgiveness, life, and salvation. We typically want to focus on other things, maybe more during Lent. Giving up something. Giving up something for Lent. I urge you, maybe you've taken the, the point to give up something, but Remember what you're also taking on in this Lenten season. You are taking on your baptism. So spend time focusing on the things which God's Word teaches us to focus on that are truly significant for our Christian life. Our baptism. Return to the Lord your God. You hear those words repeated all throughout, right? The Lenten season. So return to in your baptism to the Lord your God, forgive me, but a daily roto rooter for your soul, listen to Luther's poignant words then in closing for tonight. He says, therefore, every Christian has enough. Enough in baptism to learn and to do 
all his life. For he has always enough to do by believing firmly what baptism promises and brings victory over death and the devil. Romans 6, forgiveness of sin, Acts 2.38, God's grace through the word to save the entire Christ and the Holy Spirit with his gifts being given. 1 Corinthians 6.11 Oh, what a blessing baptism is. So take on your baptism for Lent and take it on every day of your life. Return to it daily as it has great significance and it, in fact, defines your Christian life. For it is full and complete justification. That's what Luther says. Putting us to death, making us alive, connecting us to the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus on Good Friday and to his glorious resurrection on Easter morn. There's nothing better than that. In the name of Jesus, amen. We pray that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, would always keep our hearts and our minds in our baptismal grace. Amen.